When we go to the doctor's office, we expect they are protecting our medical information. Well, listen to this. Two months ago, Change Healthcare, a billing and payment company in healthcare systems, was hit by a cyber attack. The FBI, the Department of Health and Human Services, now actively investigating whether or not patients' personal information was actually compromised. How much information was stolen? Well, that is still unknown. But this morning, we want to welcome in Christopher Alexander. He has been with us before here on Morning Street. We want to welcome him back, Christopher. You're a Chief Analytics Officer at Pioneer Development Group. And when we hear of instances like this, it is so disturbing because we know how critical our personal information is, especially when it comes to protecting our identity. And this morning, according to the cybersecurity forum, Imasoft, we know 46 hospital systems were attacked in 2023. So how widespread is this problem? Well, it's it's becoming more pervasive, and the main reason is the value. You know, if you want, if I want to buy someone's information on the dark web to get their credit mm -hmm. uh, for fraudulent credit, it's worth about a hundred dollars. If I want to buy uh, medical records, it's worth a thousand. And the reason is the difference in 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 how much you can run up in medical fraud. You're liable for about fifty dollars if your credit card is stolen. Uh, there's no rules to protect you right now for medical fraud, and it's $13,000 is the average amount that someone faces if this happens to them. Oh my. Now, when you say there's no rules to protect us from medical fraud, that is quite concerning. So how do we know if our information has been compromised? I mean, what are some of those initial red flags, and what can we do to protect ourselves? Well, you know, you, you, you get all that uh, annoying mail that you figure should say zero balance from the uh, the, the medical card or from the uh, your, your insurance company. You, you have to pay attention. Um, they're just nightmare cases. And, and what people do with your identity is they uh, go and get uh, opioid prescriptions. Uh, mm. They uh, run up all sorts of different bills um, so that they can sell sell drugs or do other things with it. And so, I mean, you, you need to pay attention and, uh, you know, check the mail and, you um, Take a look at, uh, even when you're healthy, what, what you're getting billed from your insurance company. You know, I, I have not heard before about the opioid aspect of this, people buying opioids with our identity. Are there any other reasons why this is such an increase right now, in addition to that? Well, well there's a second issue, and it's, it's a, more common than people realize, but people will share their insurance information with like a relative who doesn't have insurance. Mm. And that's illegal. Uh, to, to start, but then sometimes uh, you have someone uh, who, who you kind of violates that trust and they can run up massive, massive bills on you um, by um, assuming an identity that you've, you've sort of shared with them for illegal, but I, I suppose, you know, understandable reasons in some cases. Yeah. Well, obviously we play a part in protecting our information, but on the other hand, what can hospitals, what can doctors do to protect our information and how can we hold them accountable? Well, they're, they're starting to um, remove um, your social security number from medical cards uh, and train medical staff to recognize the circumstances. There's a pretty famous case where I think there was 1,700 different visits to get uh, opioids uh, on this woman's identity. And um, a, a doctor just thought it was a little bit suspicious looking at the, at the person's medical record and, and, and the ID, it was altered. So, you know, it goes back to paying attention and um, being vigilant like you should with any other aspect of your identity. Great reminders this morning, Christopher Alexander. Thank you. And here is some more information on your screen right now in terms of what else you can do to help protect your information. Enroll, monitor your credit reports, report unauthorized charges or incorrect bills, and always monitor medical financial accounts as closely as you can. Once again, Christopher Alexander, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for helping us protect our information.